Jeff Reese Press Grease with RWGResearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Oh, welcome back, everybody. So, 3D printer build. I'm looking for a base plate for my bed. I really want a piece of aluminum, but I found this piece of stainless that came out of an old, uh, what did that come out of? An uh, ice maker, actually. And it's a little thin, so I also have this other big giant piece that's really way too big. But um, I dug it out of there and set it up here and made a template out of cardboard of what I want to make. And obviously that one's a little bit too short, so that's a problem. Now, the big plate although plenty of space to get my piece out of it it weighs just a little bit too much uh, it's it's not practical for portability so we try something different that's right a monitor now I looked around the shop to see what I thought may have an aluminum plate in there and I remember taking a bunch of these big monitors apart and they actually have aluminum plates in them so I thought to myself yeah okay okay just big enough all right that's thick enough uh, let's give it a go so in case you're wondering this is the actual model number this monitor was an old monitor 23 inches or something and uh, it was broken so I was gonna fix it but I thought yeah we'll repurpose the aluminum so in case you're wondering what's inside of one of these you've got the bunch of uh, well, the LCD and the electronics and then these are the lenses and stuff like that different diffraction patterns for um, deflecting the light in different ways and stuff like this so that's basically what's inside of there now my favorite parts right here gotta love that noise anyway those light bulbs right there this is an old one so it's, those are actual fluorescent light bulbs so this little bitty tiny single wire is the only path back to the circuit board for all of these fluorescents which is kind of crazy but it works so there's the aluminum plate that I got out of there awesome sauce should do the treat fits on there just perfect bunch of holes and stuff in there but it just needs to be a conduit for heat don't forget to recycle your screws Ta -da! okay hold on a second let's think about this I don't think I like those holes so I think somewhere I brought a piece of aluminum with me, but I think it's diamond plate. It's at the house in the shed somewhere. Let's go see if we can find it. All right, Dexter, are you ready? Yeah. All right, this is what I got. I found this in my shed. It's a piece of pretty thin aluminum. It's thinner than I would like. So, I got it sitting on a bucket that has a speaker in it, five gallon bucket. And I cut out a cardboard template and I'm just gonna basically draw a circle even though I don't need to draw one. I'm gonna draw a circle with this. It's a pretty nice little compass. And first things first, I'm gonna draw a hole. I'm gonna draw, make a circle and then we'll make a jig so we can take the plasma cutter and actually cut this out perfect. All right, so I went ahead and marked the center and drilled it out. And then using a compass here that I've had for a while, pretty big one, I just made a circle just to give me a reference line. That's really all I was interested in, so I could move on to the next step. And what does it do? This is a plasma cutter. So this is a Harbor Freight version. You put air into the back of this thing, and it comes out the front in a plasma formation, a twirly hot plasma formation, and oh. it's and it basically cuts the metal. Oh. This is the ground lead. It has to be attached to like this. And then we have to plug it in, of course. And we have to hook up air to it. So if we plug the air in, this will just use this. Okay, we'll plug the air in. Like that. We'll make sure it's just right. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. So we'll plug the air in, 
is that we need to plug the power in. And if we got it right, we can turn it on. So look, when I, when I pull this trigger, sparks fly out. See that? Now what I want to know is if I can touch it. Alright, so I can touch it. See how I burned a hole in it? Look. I can touch it. Just like that. That's how it works, buddy. So what I want to do is make a jig that holds this so that I can just run it around and cut a perfect circle. Hmm. Cool, I'll huh? actually cut the middle right there. Yeah, it might be hot. Don't touch it. A little warm. Don't touch it. Okay, so let's finish our jig. We got this piece that we threaded in here. Now we need to finish our jig. I was thinking about using this. I just have to drill a hole in it that fits the end of this. Let's see if we can find even a piece of wire would work. I just don't want it to slip and mess it up. All right, so taking a piece of wire, putting it on that screw in the middle, basically just made a quick jig to make ourselves a little holder for the end of our plasma cutter. And I wanted it to freely flow in a circle without getting bound up. I could have cut a piece of metal or something, which probably would have worked better. The bells are ringing in the background from the clock because it's 10 o'clock p.m. again. Anyway, so after getting this set up, we're going to give it a go. Are you ready to try this out? Yeah. I'm wearing sandals. It's a bad idea. Okay. I'm going to put it, a different pair of glasses on. You wear these. Okay. You ready? Never goes to nothing. It didn't really work that well. I guess that's okay. We're gonna have to finish some of these parts by breaking it off. Hmm. I'm going to have to cut it some more. See how it didn't cut all the way through some spots? It's where those, uh, those diamond plate things are. So I'm just going to cut these off. I'm done. All right, that's pretty good to do with the sandals on. <laughs> Not really. Well, it's pretty sad, but I cut it. It's still hot. Let's have a, let's have a look. The edges look terrible. Next. They're just terrible. We'll just have to grind those down. What's the grinding? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Dexter? Very good, but I guess it works. Got caught in the grinder though and bent the corner right there. Guess that's part of it. All right, dude. What do you think? Good. Use the deburring tool. 
We have the edges a little bit. Backside wasn't too bad to do, but this front side of the diamond plate is pretty tricky. Just keep hitting those diamond plates. It's not really sharp though. It's pretty flat, but it's got this little bow in it. Yeah, he used to look like that. Use my other tools for those. Oh, a little bit better. All right, well, we cut a circle, Dexter. Might even look so around. Not bad, huh? Mm -hmm. It's not very thin, thick though. I think it needs to be thicker. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the glass. Now. I didn't have any special glass. This is actually a mirror that I found by the scrap that just happened to be exactly what I needed. So I decided to cut a bunch of um, hexagons out of this glass. So I went about cutting it with a regular glass cutter and then just breaking the pieces off. So the interesting thing is I came to a point, as you can see right here, that I needed to cut basically the shape that they made I had to cut into the other ones so basically I was going to lose one or two or all of them by breaking it the wrong way so this was my little pride and joy moment so you can see what this glass looks like I have three of these particular shapes on here and I wanted to cut them out and they're gonna break the glass because cutting glass is not the easiest thing to do in the world you always I seem to always have problems but you can see the shapes right there, okay, they're cutting into each other. So what I did is I cut from the very center all the way to the edge, three different directions. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, how am I supposed to break this thing? So I was going to set something right in the middle and then just push down on it and break it. And that actually worked pretty good, but I had it upside down. So I don't know what I was thinking. But after looking at it twice I flipped it back over I put a bucket of heavy objects on the other side and I just went for it sorry there's no sound but I'm like <laughs> smash oh I scared my wife over here I think <laughs> that's pretty funny anyway pride and joy of the day I actually broke that glass in three orientations from the center out without messing them up I was pleasantly surprised that that worked so after this, I actually had like, you can see here, like seven, eight, or nine of these things out of one of those big mirrors that were trash. So I just took one, took a sandpaper, and cleaned it up on the edge. All right, guys, so to mark this, I just printed out, I Google sketched up this, did a top view, printed this out to scale, and then um, just drew my lines and marked my edges. So this gives me my perfect triangle. This should be exactly where we want it to be and then I'll do the exact same thing to mark the other two holes I need to drill but we'll start with these time lapse all right guys so one thing I've learned with the drill press is anytime you're drilling something thin like this you really want to put it in between two pieces of wood or something and clamp it so it doesn't pull up or fly everywhere so this works really well Alright, don't forget the deburring tool. This guy works really well. So there's the before. There's the after. Can't see much of an edge there before and after.
All right, these fit perfectly right where I wish them to be. I think I bumped it, but uh, they do fit just right. And uh, now I need to finish machining these little parts. I don't have them all done at this exact point in my life, so hopefully tomorrow I'll have them done. See what happens. We'll get there. Okay, there we are. That's it. That's the end. Part two where I finished those things I just showed you is coming. So leave a comment. Hope you're enjoying. Bye.